You guys are just stopping me, particularly from going in and using it. Yes. I'm, you guys are denying surface because of my assistive devices. That is correct. Part 13 of a multi-part series featuring Guilford County, North Carolina. In late 2019 and early 2020, Alfonso Boyce worked as a security guard at the Guilford County Complex in downtown High Point, North Carolina. The county complex included the Guilford County Courthouse and the County Public Health Department. Guilford County hired North State Security Group based in Winston-Salem, North Carolina to provide security guards with arrest powers. North State contracts out their security guards, like Alfonso Boyce, who have been through a law enforcement academy. Guilford County and other North State customers can have security guards that don't need to call local PD or sheriffs, because their guards are public officers with arrest powers. The first time Mike encountered Boyce was December 18th, 2019, at the Guilford County Courthouse. Yes, sir. Hi. Is this the Guilford County Courthouse? Yes, it is, sir. Boyce denied Mike entry into the courthouse based on Mike's use of assistive technology Mike uses to mitigate his disabilities. Boyce recognized Mike uses his devices as assistive technology, but Boyce shifted the blame to the judge who wrote the order banning electronics. At this point in the building, there are no phones allowed, cameras, communication devices. Really? Yes. What? Is there a... Like, as, as for what? I know, but there's posted on the door that it's a uh-huh. judge's order. Okay. Is it, so it's an order from a judge? From a judge, the sitting judge, Is since it? 2014. Do you know? Yeah. Do you, would you know or would he know, like, who do I need to talk to about being able to walk through and go to those different offices um, with my cameras? Because I, I use them as a... Um, reasonable accommodation under the ADA? Yeah, it'll probably have to be the ADA that will give you a slip to allow you to bring in your electronic devices. That's the only way electronic devices come through the courthouse. No, not, not the, not the, uh, you know, the, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Like, so it's a federal, uh, mm-hmm. federal act, federal, mm-hmm. legal, legal, they, yeah, yeah, federal law. So they could be like, yes, okay, whatever. Uh-huh. If, really, if you have that, then should be good to go. Yeah. But you need that as a visual aid yeah. to get around. Yeah. Because this is a new one. This is... Oh, this... This, this order? AD, no, the ADA. Oh, the ADA. Yeah. You know, because I know, like, when people come in wheelchairs and stuff, I'm like, mm-hmm. well, if I'm going to hide anything, I'm definitely going to put it in the wheelchair. Because mm-hmm. they're not going to tell me to get up out of it so they can search the whole thing. They're just going to yeah. wander while you're sitting there. Yeah, but you guys, are, you guys are telling me I can't use my... Devices, you know, that's like taking my cane away. <laughs> yeah. Well, some judge, some judge is telling me, and you're 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 following his order, like, so that's that's kind of. Yeah. Boyce swore to having this information in the suppression hearing on March second, twenty twenty-two. Do you recall if you had any conversation with him about recording or his devices? in the county property uh, the first time when he was coming in with it i stated what the policy said everything in the door he let me know that it was his visual aids and he needed those to get around and it helped him see and maneuver through things that's when i got captain daughtery to come and explain and figure out how to deal with this situation because we never dealt with this before Boyce acknowledged he swore an oath to uphold the U.S. Constitution and agreed that the Constitution and federal law isn't trumped by a judge's order. So, logically, the Constitution, a.k.a. law of the land, isn't either. Yet, Boyce lacked the strength of character to honor his oath. The county judge's order doesn't trump federal law, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you have an oath of office, the same, like, you swear to the same, same oath, like, uphold the Constitution? Just like you did in the military? Yeah? So you know this is against our oath, right? You know, a county judge shouldn't have the power to override federal law, or I mean, even the First Amendment, which is above federal law. Although Boyce's words and demeanor were pleasant, his actions were discriminatory and illegal. The video of that encounter quickly became the most viewed on the Blind Justice channel, reaching over 400,000 views. Mike wouldn't encounter Boyce again for over a month. When Mike returned to the courthouse after working with the Disability Access Coordinator, Faith Taylor, at the state level NCAOC in Raleigh, 
But can you, the sighted viewers, find Boyce in any other visits Mike made to the county complex between his courthouse visits on December 18, 2019 and January 31, 2020? Do I do I go left or right when I leave? Left. Yeah. To my left? Yeah. Okay. And it is it is it uh, 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 if you go right, you can just go down sidewalk you'll have to continue the stairs. Oh I'm good with stairs. Mike went live on January thirty first, twenty twenty, because of the hostility and perceived dangers. The audio from that live was poor quality for a few reasons. It was storming outside. The courthouse entryway has hard polished stone surfaces which make lots of echoes and Mike was using a headset to get help and directions from you, the viewers. Boyce tried creeping up behind Mike several times as Mike waited for the DAC to come down and facilitate equal access. Uh, is Patricia Dixon in? What do you need to do? Uh, I can see if I can talk to Patricia Dixon about uh, ADA requests, disability requests. He's wanting to talk to Is Patricia Dixon uh, available? Okay. Cool. What's that? Talking to Jim. Oh, okay. How's it going? Kind of weird. You like walked around behind me. Do you want to talk to me? You got a radio. Do you work? Do you work here? Can I help you with something? For some reason they're like hovering over me? Hello? You're being kind of menacing here. What? Do you work here? Do you work here? Okay. 
So we're at the Guilford County Courthouse here. And then they just stopped talking to me. They just went silent. Kind of strange. Okay. So I, here we go. Your permit that you have. Oh, I, your, I don't have a permit. For your devices? Uh, it's right here. No, I don't have one. You didn't get one sent to you? I don't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually fill out or ask anybody to do it uh, with a... I know somebody did one for a, na for a name that I didn't provide. Boyce failed to realize that his wet shoes squeaked against the polished floor when he was playing his predatory game of cat and mouse. At some point, Boyce randomly opened a notebook and read off what he believed to be Mike's full name and address. Are you talking to me? Did you mean Michael Paul Nelson? Do you think it is? Is he living in Kernersville? Do you think that's the name? Why do you think that's the right name? Does this indicate Boyce's premeditation? Does it indicate Boyce was attempting to dox Mike live on YouTube? Eventually, a sheriff's deputy addressed Mike, and she told Mike that Mike couldn't come into the courthouse with his devices and that he'd have to leave. I had the opportunity to come in. Oh, no, I haven't. You guys are refusing me service, refusing you me can access. Come in as long as you're not recording. Okay. I, I use assistive devices. I'm asking right. for... Uh, exactly. While Mike was talking with the deputy, Boyce flanked Mike again. While standing behind him, Boyce shook and clinked his handcuffs. Mike made sure to get the name of the deputy, Deputy Gilcrest, before leaving so he could follow up with redress of grievances. She told Mike that if he didn't leave, he could be arrested for trespass. Mike left the building without further incident. So, um, I'm going to have to ask you Okay. okay. And who are, who are you again? Sergeant Gilchrist. Gilchrist? Yes, sir. All right, and you're with who? Gilchrist County Sheriff's Office. Gilford County Sheriff's Office. Yes. All right. Do you have an identifying number, badge number, or something? Um, um, my call number is 740. 740? Okay. And what about the other people here? Can you help me identify the other people that have been given orders? I don't know who's all been given orders. I don't okay. know their names. Is there a supervisor? Like, are, I mean, are you the direct line supervisor? I am not this supervisor. Okay. Can we talk to them? Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to identify the people that, you know, in violation of, of the law and, and conspiracy to deprive constitutional rights. We're not doing that, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave them, okay? Okay. So can a supervisor talk to me outside? I'll let them know. I can't make you come back out. I'll let them know, but um, don't leave them after the second request, so I want you to go ahead and leave, okay? okay? All right. Thank you. Due to the rain, Mike donned his poncho, which obscured his body camera. Mike still had the live stream running as he walked around the courthouse. As Mike walked along the street side of the courthouse, a car pulled up next to him. A man's voice, one that sounded like one of the security guards, yelled at Mike that he was going to shoot Mike dead. Mike thought the live stream caught the death threat, but found out later the stream dropped right before the threat was made. We initially didn't think the GoPro caught anything because it was inside Mike's coat, under a poncho. It wasn't until a few weeks later that we came across the following audio. What's up? What's up? I don't know you guys heard, he's like, you blind motherfucker. I'm gonna pop a cap in your ass, like threatening to shoot me. Mike went to the High Point PD the following day, on February 1st, 2020, to report the death threat. Here's, here's the 
for me, why, why the, the threat level credibility went up is because I thought for sure I had it on my live. Right. You know, I thought for sure that this guy is making a, a, a threat to kill me live right. to the world. Well, and, then we, and then we reviewed it and like, it died literally moments before the threat happened. Like well, to me, that, that red flags go off with that. You know, I'm like, could it be a coincidence? Yes, but then yeah. we checked my battery was good, my signal was strong. A few days later, on February 4th, 2020, Mike revisited the Public Health Department in High Point, North Carolina. Caution, viewer discretion is advised. Boyce entered the public lobby and gloved up within eight seconds of entering. He didn't announce his presence to the blind patron. Boyce took up a flanking position behind Mike and again made handcuff noises. Okay. I, 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 use, I use these as I, assistive devices. I understand your for, assistive devices. Boyce solicited a trespass by telling Dougherty to tell Mike to leave. To turn it off. Even though Dougherty didn't bite and no one told Mike to leave, Boyce engaged. He asked Mike if he was going to leave, and Mike said he would absolutely leave. Are you going to leave, yes or no? You've absolutely, asked, yes, I will absolutely leave. Boyce threatened Mike by saying he was going to be arrested for second-degree trespass. Boyce didn't identify himself as a law enforcement officer. He didn't say he was the one who was going to arrest Mike. He violated that, you, you know, that, you don't, that crime. If you don't leave sense? the building, you're going to be arrested you're going for second-degree trespass right now. Okay. So, for second, leave? for second degree yes, trespass, you're not asking to leave, and you're not leaving the county building. So that, hold on, second degree trespass is okay. if you're on the property of another. Oh, I'm trying to clarify what's going on. So second degree trespass is if you're on the property of another, and you're without permission, or you you are asked to leave, or told to leave, and you refuse. Is that right? Is that my understanding of that right? Whatever it is you wanted to be. Leslie had just told Mike that they were all security. My property. This is, our, this is our security. And this is our security. They're all our okay. security. Mike had just asked Dougherty how he could make a criminal complaint. This gentleman uh, assaulted me. He grabbed my property without my permission. So you grab. So he admits. So he admits grabbing it. We'll, we'll take care of that later. But what I need you to do. Now, well, how do, I need you to turn how do I file a, a complaint or a criminal report? Uh, you, can, you can you can file that through Guilford County. Okay. Why didn't Boyce identify himself as a Leo and just take the criminal complaint of the blind patron? Mike asked Boyce if Mike's understanding of secondary trespass was correct, to which Boyce replied, it is whatever you want it to be. I'm trying to clarify what's going on. So secondary trespass is if you're on the property of another and you're without permission or you're, you are asked to leave or told to leave and you refuse. Is that right? Is that my understanding of that right? Whatever it is you want it to be. Again, this doesn't sound like a law enforcement officer or anyone that has knowledge of or concern for upholding the law. Mike called out the threats of violence in response to Mike simply trying to have equal access in the public lobby, report on the breaking developing news, and redress his grievances. Well, I just want to understand what, what you're threatening. Like if I'm you're not thre threatening you. Nobody's Are you going to leave, sir? 42 USC 12203, prohibition against retaliation and coercion. A, retaliation. No person shall discriminate against any individual because such individual has opposed an act or practice made unlawful by this chapter, or because such individual made a charge, testified, attested, or participated in any manner in an investigation, proceeding, or hearing under this chapter. B. Interference, coercion, or intimidation. It shall be unlawful to coerce, intimidate, threaten, or interfere with an individual in the exercise or enjoyment of or on account of his or her having exercised or enjoyed, or on account of his or her having aided or encouraged any other individual in the exercise or enjoyment of any right granted or protected by this chapter. Boyce threatened Mike with torture cuffs, and Mike again called out the violence. Now I'm about What's to put going on? on you if you don't. Wait a minute, so you are going to use violence against me? I'm trying That's to clarify. Not violence. Like, take, taking away my freedom is, is absolutely the violence. Sir. Boyce told Mike he had five seconds to leave. But Mike was still trying to clarify his legal status with the property and who was making the threat so he could follow up with a redress of grievances. Boyce didn't wait the arbitrary five seconds, but instead attacked Mike. 
Are you going to leave right now or not? Yes, I'm trying to clarify. What, what do you mean by secondary trespass? Let's because because it's five seconds. I'm going to take you, turn around, and put your hands behind your back. A property, you a jail. property of another. That means it. You know, this is, this is, what are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop. Boy, slam Mike to the ground a couple times. Stop. What are you doing? Who are you? Stop. Stop. Who are you? Stop. Who are you? Stop. Who are you? Stop. Who are you? I don't know who you are. Stop. This is assault and battery. Stop. Help. 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 Somebody help me. Stop. 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 Ow. Ow. You're hurting me. Stop. Why are you doing this? Ah. What are you doing? What the? What are you doing? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? He choked Mike a few times, and with Dougherty's assistance, they picked Mike up by the cuffed arms and uncuffed ankles, causing Mike's legs to bend backwards and beyond normal range. Ow! Ow! Somebody help! Grab, grab his arms, I'll get his legs. Help me! Set him up into the chair. All right. Somebody help! One, two, three, up! Ah! Ah! Ow! Ah! Help! Somebody, in the chair. somebody help me! Right. Help! I can't breathe! Uh, yeah, put me on my neck. Help! Help! Help me! Ow! Ow! Okay, sir. Somebody help! Somebody help! Help me! Okay. Help me, please. Take the bag off. Somebody help! You get a disability coordinator. Let me go get the big wheelchair. Please. Somebody help me. Somebody help! Ow! 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 Stop! Please stop! Uh, 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 help me! Uh, I can't! Uh, I can't! Uh, 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 stop! Please stop! Please stop! Please stop hurting me! Boyce testified in the suppression hearing that he did identify himself to Mike, the blind patron. Did you uh, identify yourself to Mr. Nelson? I identified myself while we were talking. I let him know that he was, I was going to be the one to place him in handcuffs, which any person reasonable thought would know that he's probably a police officer. Then he asked me my name. I stated to it, stated where I was, what company I worked for. He repeated it three, four, five times, then still proceeded to say that he was being kidnapped by people he didn't know. Mike actually asked the attacker to identify himself 10 times before Boyce vocalized his name. A property of another, that means it's, you know, this is, this is, what are you doing? Whoa, 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 stop, stop, what are you doing? Who are you? Stop, stop, who are you? Stop, who, who are you? Stop, who are you? Stop, who are you? I don't know who you are, stop, this is assault and battery. Stop! Help! 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 Somebody help me! Stop! 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 Ow! Ow! You're hurting me! Stop! Why are you doing this? Ah! What are you doing? What the? What are you doing? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Roll over now! Who are you? Roll over! Who are you? Who are you? I don't know who you are. Ah! I like breaking my arm. Turn around, sir. Who are you? Roll over. Who are you? This is Officer Boyce. Call me police officer. <laughs> Lord stay. Now roll over. Uh, why couldn't you say that? <clears throat> Goodness. Uh, why are you hurting me, man? But Boyce testified that Mike only asked him twice. How many times did I ask you to identify yourself before you did? Twice during the struggle, right behind each other. Was it more than twice? It was about two times. Was it maybe nine times? I can't keep count because I can't remember how many times you said it. If we refreshed your memory with the video, it would help you with identifying how many times, correct? Yes. Did you catch that? He swore it was two times, but when pushed on that answer, he changed his testimony to say he didn't know. But Boyce never identified himself to his blind victim. Imagine you're out for coffee at a coffee shop, and a person, not in any kind of uniform, approaches you. They aren't wearing a badge, 
or a name tag or any identifying apparatus that you can see. This person orders you to stop drinking your coffee. You'd likely ask them who they are and what authority they're invoking to be able to order you to do anything. The person responds and says they're Officer Jones with a company police department, but Jones doesn't show you any credentials. Would you believe he's a cop? Would a reasonable person? Did Jones actually identify himself? Now, did Boyce ever identify himself to his blind victim? Boyce stopped Mike's body camera from recording Boyce's continued criminal actions. Somebody help! Please! Somebody help me! Boyce eventually put Mike in a wheelchair and was responsible for Mike's well-being as Boyce took custody of Mike. Although Mike said Boyce injured him and Mike asked for help over a hundred times, Boyce didn't call for emergency medical services as required. Did you ever call for medical services for me? No, sir. Uh, excuse me one second. Judge, are the other witnesses still present? They left the courtroom. Thank you. Uh, did you hear me say ow after you took me to the ground? Yes, sir. Did you hear me say you injured me? Yes, sir. Did I say that many times? A lot of times. Did I say ow many times? Yes. And what does that typically indicate? That you might be in pain. Okay. Is might it uh, your, your policy from North State Company Police to call for medical assistance when somebody is injured? Yes. And you didn't do that in this case, correct? No. Are you a medical professional? No. Can you determine whether somebody is injured or not? No. Boyce took Mike before Magistrate Jimmy Carter, where Boyce fabricated facts and charges against Mike to cover up for Boyce's felonious actions. The live stream was still running, and Boyce tried to stop it as well. Eventually, the phone died. Mike lost consciousness along the route to the magistrate's office and didn't come to until some four or five hours later in the emergency department. As this attack happened live on YouTube, many of you called in trying to help Mike by informing the magistrate that the world was watching. Through public records and from what the nurses told us, we've pieced together some of the missing time. Boyce attacked Mike around 5 p.m. Mike was booked into the jail, then released shortly afterwards. The release document says he refused to sign and was released at 7.02 p.m. The EMTs picked Mike up unresponsive outside the jail at 8.12 p.m. So Mike was unconscious for nearly three hours before any medical attention arrived. We submitted records requests to Guilford County for all recordings of the events. The only records they said were responsive were the security camera videos from the public lobby in the health department, the courtyard, and the path they took to take Mike to the magistrate's office door. The county attorney claimed the other videos are not public record as they are controlled by a custodial law enforcement agency. The courthouse and cameras are maintained by the sheriff's office. The county took months to release the videos that they did, but they were highly altered, edited. You can click the card or check the description for a link to those videos. We still have a lot to cover here, so don't miss our next video where we will delve deeper into the web of lies Boyce wove while under oath. Thanks for watching. Deopresso Liber. Mm -hmm.